Welcome back to Shaw TV. I'm your Seed Sky host, Nicole Fitzgerald, and you're watching The Express, your local voice. Color affects us. It can determine what kind of art we're drawn to. It can set a mood or tell us something about our own. Meet a Burnaby consultant who wants to color the world happy. Because it's way easier to get excited about a color when it's yeah. in something like an inspiration piece rather than an empty room. So. Maria Killam loves color and the ability it has to transform a room and the people living in it. This interior designer encourages her clients to use color in their homes for the way it can make them feel. If turquoise is your favorite color or yellow or orange, paint that room a color over a neutral because then you can just walk in and just feel happy with and by seeing this great color on the walls. Maria says that many people live in homes filled with neutral tones rather than uplifting colors. A big trend now is that people are painting their walls gray and they're buying a charcoal sofa and then they buy gray tile and gray countertops and they're wondering you know, why their space is not inspiring them. So if your house is too gray and you're a little uninspired, then um, the thing to do is to inject color. And inject color is exactly what Maria did in this room, building the color palette around her client's favorite painting. It's a treat to live here, you know, I mean, coming down the stairs in the morning, it reminds you of all the effort that went in to change it. And so uh, it's definitely lifted our spirits, I would say. I actually like this color better when I see it with the other choices than I did when you first selected it. The thing I liked about the consultation process with Maria is I could push back on anything. So I could tell Sarah I hated something and it would never hurt her feelings. The very fact that we had that open relationship and could, you know, bounce ideas back and forth made it much more productive for me. And there's the backdrop of the painting here. <laughs> Maria sees her projects through from initial color consultation to the complete design of the room, including furniture and accessories. She documents her work on her very successful blog, read by over 100,000 people every month. She has also written an e-book. She attributes her success to the power of color and her ability to choose the right colors for the rooms and for her clients. That's really what we all want, is to be happy in our space. And that's really what I do. I create spaces that fill you with happiness when you walk in the door. In Burnaby, I'm Kendall Harris for The Express. Learn more about colors. Maria has a book that's available online. Visit mariakillam.com. She also hosts workshops in Vancouver. The moon is a mysterious force and a thing of great beauty in this Bill Hoops painting. How much do you know about the moon? Did you know that this grand old dame is 4.5 billion years old? That's a lot of candles to blow out on a birthday cake. The moon. Most of us see the moon, of course, from here on Earth. And here at the H.R. McMillan Space Center, uh, we see the moon quite a bit. Hey, it's Cam Cronin for The Express, and we are going moon crazy. Now, why is that? The moon's been up there for a long time. You've probably all seen it, so what exactly is new? NASA has developed a program called the Lunar Reconnaissance uh, uh, Observatory, the LRO, and it has provided some brand new data about the moon. Most of us take the moon for granted. It's up there and we assume that it got made somehow. Um, but NASA is actually now getting to the bottom of how exactly our moon was formed. So how does all that stuff actually uh, come to be? Well, I can show you. Uh, when we're talking about the evolution of our moon, um, most of the theories come down to the fact that our moon was actually a piece of our Earth. So when our Earth was first forming, uh, you know, billions and billions of years ago, the big theory is that it was struck by some massive asteroid that was floating around through space. Now, when our universe was very young, there were big chunks of rock that were floating around. That it probably struck our Earth and then it was flung up with a bunch of different pieces, and those pieces sort of coalesced into the moon. Now, looking at the history of the moon, the moon has been attacked and hit by a number of asteroids over the year, and that's what's giving us that sort of pot-marked effect all over the surface. It was bombarded by pieces of space debris, giving it a really, really fantastically rich surface. 
Now, when it was hit, it was hit very early on. And as you can see here, there was actually still fresh molten rock below the surface. And as that started to cool over the years, we started to get different uh, shades of material that the moon was made out of. And it is the different cooling effects uh, from those different impacts that in fact have given us those different faces. And those are the reason that we have those different shades uh, of color. Now, our moon uh, really hasn't changed that much in the last little while, and that's because there's no erosion on the moon. All this new information gives us a better idea about basically the early days of our solar system. And the more we know about our moon, the more information we're going to be able to have about the other moons that are out in space, some of which might actually harbor life, some of the moons that are around some of our other planets. It's new information, and the, uh, the, the idea of our moon actually yielding new information, even after all these years, is kind of cool. There is a lot left to explore out in space. So, for the H.R. McMillan Space Center and for the Express, the next time you look up in the night sky, whatever you see, man, woman, poodle, iguana, now you know a little bit more about how those faces came to be. Another fun fact, Apollo astronauts left their footprints on the moon. Scientists expect that those footprints will be there for 10 million years because there's no erosion on the moon. The Express, you'll only find it here on Shaw TV, and we've got one tasty story coming your way. So just a lemon in half. Now this isn't going to be... After the break. It's just to give the chicken a little bit of flavor, okay? Mediterranean cooking tips from celebrity chef Anthony Sedlak. Just tenderize the meat and get all the flavors. Welcome back to The Express on Shaw TV. There is always an artist in action here at the White Dog Studio Gallery in Whistler. A visit here is an animated experience. Things are also looking pretty lively in North Vancouver where we find Metro Vancouver host Johanna Ward. Although it looks like she's doing more eating than cooking. Hopefully you've got a couple of stories cooking up as well. Yes, Nicole, I'm in the home of celebrity chef Anthony Sedlak. Now, he just got back from a once-in-a-lifetime trip to Greece with Oikos Yogurt. He's going to share with us some Mediterranean cooking tips and tricks and some Oprah-worthy stories. Yamas. 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 You know the saying, when in Rome? When it comes to authentic culinary cultural experiences, it's all Greek for celebrity chef Anthony Sedlak. I got to milk a sheep and make Greek yogurt literally from milking a sheep to the finished process, putting it in my mouth. And now it's going into our mouths, served up in Anthony's North Van condo kitchen. I feel like I just want to spoon right into this. It's know? good, right? Yeah, Greek it's yogurt? good, yeah. For the marinade, we use Greek olive oil, some healthy dollops of Greek yogurt, paprika, garlic, lemon, and ginger. You just want a little bit. This dish is inspired by a meal Anthony had in a little town two hours outside of Athens. And I had the most amazing chicken in this very uh, sort of incognito restaurant. It was unbelievable. I love how passionate you are about everything. Is that, are you this way about everything non-food related or is it just food? No, not so much. I put all my energy anything. into the food, everything else food. is second rate. <laughs> He's joking, of course, the guy oozes excitement for life. Like it really is one of the most delicious things I've ever eaten. Still, when you peruse his lengthy resume, Food Network Canada host of The Main and judge of The Family Cook-Off, cookbook author, restaurateur, you'll see food as his focus, making the trip overseas even more meaningful. It's one of the most profound things I've ever seen. It's incredibly healthy. They eat locally, they are inspired by what grows around them, they rear their own animals. A guy like Anthony seems a sponge for new experiences. Still, he's forever patient as a teacher. That's good, that's, yeah. that's perfect. I think like some of the best advice I've ever been given is that cooking's really a lot easier than people think. Okay, so trusting a chicken. First and foremost, we're gonna put some aromatics into the chicken. So just a lemon in half. Now this isn't gonna be eaten in the end. It's just to give the chicken a little bit of flavor, okay? We also add red onion, pepper, and rosemary. By putting a couple of aromatics, onion, lemon, into the chicken, it also helps to prop it open, right? So it cooks a little bit quicker. Then it's time to truss, which just means to bind or secure tightly. Tie it up like that. Right. Make it pretty. Yeah. Tie a bow. That's beautiful. I'm like you look Julia Child. <laughs> yeah. 
Next, we stick it in the marinade. Okay. Yogurt, especially Greek yogurt, being that it's high in that protein, it really helps to tenderize the meat and get all the flavors, the aromatics, the smoked paprika, the rosemary, and the oregano into the chicken. I bet you want to know what's in Anthony's fridge too, don't you? Have a look. Not a lot. He's too busy cooking to eat. They say you can tell a lot about a chef from what's in his fridge. So in the case of our traveling talent, an empty fridge translates as a heart willing to be filled with the culinary cultures of the world. It's inspired every facet of my cuisine. What I took away from it most is just the simplicity and how much simple food, quality ingredients is front and center in Greek cuisine. Drooling a little over Anthony's joie de vivre and dish du jour, I'm Johanna Ward in North Vancouver for The Express. There is nothing like traveling through your taste buds. You can see more of Anthony on the Food Network. Just visit them online at thefoodnetwork.ca. From food tips to art tips to event ones, there's never been a better time to visit the Sea to Sky. The Express Spotlight has more. Navigate to Spearhead Range with Powder Magazine's Mitchell Scott and Friends at the Mountain Culture Variety Show. Big Mountain moguls Leslie Anthony, Jordan Manley, Eric Pahoda, and Sterling Lawrence share photos and stories for this multimedia Mountain Madness fundraiser. Internationally recognized humanitarian Stephen Lewis was named by Forbes magazine as one of the world's most powerful feminists. Join him for an empowering and inspirational night to raise funds for the House Sound Women's Centre. Celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Whistler Cup. More than 400 kids from around the world will compete in this international children's ski race. Cheer on the world's fastest juvenile racers. Don't miss out on our half-hour Whistler Cup special. It airs right here on Shaw TV on Friday, April 13th at 10 p.m. on Channel 4. And that wraps up this week's show at the White Dog Studio Gallery in Whistler. It's located in Function Junction, a local's tip. Stop by Purebred on your way over to the gallery. If you'd like to see more of our stories, visit shawtv.com from all of us on The Express. Thanks for watching, and we'll leave you with a look at Cats, my favorite Broadway musical.